Hello and welcome to OMG Craft. Today we are going to be taking a look at a 1.15 iron farm. This is made for 1.15. Made in 1.15. I have been frustrated because I've been looking around for a 1.15 farm and all of the farms seem to be made for 1.14.4 but they work in 1.15 and some of them don't. I've built them and they just don't work. So this one is guaranteed to work in Minecraft 1.15. I will mention that the one that I made for 1.14 that does work in 1.15 it still works it still functions there have been some nice modifications some behaviors that we know that villagers will do in order to spawn iron golems so this farm takes that into account and is a little bit more efficient than that farm also before we jump in a big thanks to three different people number one is techman88 who is the original designer of the current farm that we are going to be taking a look at also big thanks to rayworks who built the 1.14 farm that i talked about but also there's a few little details in here that are from him and then also big thanks to doc m77 who also put in a little bit of extra tweaks here and there with this farm so you guys are all amazing thank you so much so let's jump into it so here we are inside of minecraft and this is the farm that we are going to be building today i talked about some efficiencies with this farm that are really nice for one 15 mostly with line of sight to the zombie down here so these villagers they need a few things to happen in order for them to spawn an iron golem they need to have slept in a bed worked at a workstation and seen a zombie and then they will spawn an iron golem so they do need to be able to sleep and work in order to sleep and work they need to break a line of sight with the zombie because if they are staring at a zombie they see him they freak out they will not work or sleep so you need a way to kind of let the villagers see the zombie and then not see the zombie and that has been the big problem with these villager iron farms and so with this technique we use water to sort of bob these villagers up and down this carpet will break their line of sight to the zombie that's sitting in this minecart and that way they will be able to work and sleep so if i set time to midnight here there we go we can see that all of the villagers will try to sleep they just have to get into the bed for like a half moment they don't have to do anything else they just have to sort of halfway sleep I know it's it's not very restful, I know, but that is all they need to do. And then we have to wait until the time is 2000. At that point, they will go into their work mode and try to work. And so you do need to wait for those two things to happen after you build this farm. So if you've built it and you're sitting here going, I don't see any iron, it's because you need to wait for them to work and to sleep in order for them to start to get scared and to spawn these iron golems so once all of that is accomplished and it is at this moment then villagers will try to spawn iron golems to protect themselves from these zombies we have these spawn platforms they'll spawn up here the iron golems will eventually see that zombie try to walk towards it and fall down into this killing chamber this lava blade will kill them so here we go this is perfect timing thank you iron golem he will hit that lava blade it takes a little while for him to take a ton of damage and then his poppies and iron ingots will go into the chest down below i'm going to build this in as much survival as i can i feel like you guys like it whenever i build in survival so we are going to build this i like to build it near a village that way we have kind of a constant supply of villagers you may see some iron golems around the the uh, villagers have spawned those because i like to build these near a village so that you can easily just walk over and grab some villagers from the village that's already there you don't need to worry about transporting them very far so we are going to do the same thing i'm just going to build my farm just right over here in this nice open area I've, okay i've just cleared it away i said i'd build it in survival but in a moment we'll build it in survival so this has a few different steps and we're going to cover each one of them so first let's talk about oh gosh yeah i'm trying to show you all the materials you're going to need in order to make this starting off with the killing chamber anytime ignore everything in my inventory holy moly okay here we go this is everything you are going to need in order to make the killing 
killing chamber anytime that you see smooth stone or uh, sometimes later on uh, on these pods I talk about them in iron blocks that is just any general building block that is just a solid block that is all you need on the villager pods this is the exact amount that you're gonna need uh, the 41 iron blocks and one iron block right there uh, this smooth stone slab this is exactly how much you are going to need for the moving the villagers this is just an estimation you just need a ton of blocks and then for moving the uh, zombie at the end here that's also just an estimation except for once you get to the mine cart. So let's cover it uh, once again. Killing chamber. You're just going to need a whole bunch of blocks, probably two stacks, uh, but you need some. At least two chests, if not more. At least one hopper, if not more. You will need one trapdoor, one type of transparent block, five oak signs, two water buckets, and some lava. For the villager pods, you'll need some scaffolding to reach up to the top. This is not the exact amount. You'll need one solid block, three white beds, three types of workstations. I like the cartography table because all it takes is two paper and four wood to make. You can also do the same thing with composters if you want to use only wood in order to make it. Some type of lighting block. I like jack lanterns because they're pretty cheap, but this could also be sea lanterns or glowstone. One piece of white carpet, one trap door. It doesn't have to be white carpet, any type of carpet. And one water bucket. Then you'll also need 41 solid blocks in order to make a little roof for them. For This is the chamber, this is the area for the iron golems to spawn. Two types of light emitting blocks. I'm using jack lanterns here. Two oak trap doors and four glass. And you'll need to do that twice. So you'll need all of those things for two different pods. Uh, so double the ingredients. That's why I have two of the chests right there. For a roof, this roof is to protect the villagers from lightning strikes. You'll need exactly this many of the slabs. To move the villagers, you'll need some amount of solid blocks, some amount of powered rail, one activator rail, a few levers, this is some amount of levers, and at least three mine carts to put the villagers in. Then to move the zombie, you'll need some amount of, of solid blocks, some amount of powered rail, a mine cart to move the zombie in, two slabs, a name tag to name that zombie, an anvil to name the name tag, and some amount of levers to power your powered rail. Like I said, I'm going to be trying to do this in survival and using as a little of creative mode as possible. So let's go ahead and throw on our armor and move some blocks around. I don't need these in my hot bar. And switch into game mode survival. So we're gonna start off by building the killing floor. The reason I like to do that is it helps you space out the rest of your build. And what you'll need to do is to dig down. This will have to be three wide and then nine across. So we did, we've already taken out uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, I did one too many. So that is how long you'll need it to be, and then you'll need to make it at least three deep. And you can decide to make the walls something different. I'm going to make them out of smooth stone just because the sand sometimes gets in the way. So if you're gonna do that, you'll need to, to dig out an extra block. So you'll it'll need to be five by 11, and you can keep the corners or not. Okay, I've uh, put in my floor, and once again, three by nine and we're gonna start to dig out the walls here so that we can have some nice clean builds here. Okay, so now we have built this. So we have our hole. We are going to need to decide on a side just to add a chest on. So I'm gonna go ahead and build it on this side. So I'm just gonna clear away some of the land in order to be able to reach down to the bottom level of this area. And what you'll need to do, oh my gosh, this pick is too fast. What you'll need to do is to go into your build here and find the center. So we should have a pretty defined center area and break out the block that is right on the wall and the one directly below that as well. On the area of the wall, you're going to want to add a cobblestone stair and I kind of like to put it on this side just so that the other side, it's nice and smooth, which is kind of cool. This is going to be where our chest will eventually open. So we are going to, boop, Oops, now I saw that my chest did not connect over here. So all I'm gonna do is break that chest and then place it back down. There we go, so now we have a double 
wide chest. Over in both corners, we are going to add some water, just like this, and you'll see that the water will come up to the edge of that trap door. That is just enough of water in order to make an entity flow onto the top of that trap door. So if I take all the sand, throw it over here, it will eventually get over to the top of that trap door, which will allow our hopper to suck it all up, which is what we want. Now, we are going to switch to our oak signs and our lava bucket, and we're going to place a sign over here, over here, and this is all above your hopper and right there. So it's sort of making a trough of signs. We're gonna place another sign onto the bottom sign and then another sign on top of that. And we'll have to crouch in order to do that, otherwise, you, you just kind of smack that sign with another sign. So we're gonna crouch and just line it up perfectly. There we go. There we go, perfect. So that creates a bucket for our lava bucket. Now, because this is kind of dangerous, I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and pick that up. That way we don't have to deal with it and then get out of this build. But this killing chamber is basically completely done and we can destroy that sand. It'll go over here and you can see all that is caught over here. I'm gonna put my lava bucket inside of there. Eventually that lava will go there. That'll be the lava blade that will kill all of the iron golems just for safety's sake. I'm gonna leave it open for right now. You don't have to worry about those signs catching on fire. And any mob that gets caught in this, even you know zombies or skeletons or whatever, that trap door will push them into that lava blade so they will die. And so you'll get all of their items as well. I've even seen a baby zombie caught on this and every time it jumps up on that trap door, it does get caught in the lava and so it will die as well. If you want to expand this sort of creation, you can add more of hoppers uh, below that hopper and more chests below this chest. If you need more room, you probably will because this is a pretty efficient farm. Just from a few hours of sitting around, we've gotten lots and lots of iron from it. So that is the killing chamber done. Now we're gonna move on to building our villager pods. And we're gonna start off with where the villagers are gonna go and then we're going to build a roof on top of that and these iron blocks they can really be any building block like we mentioned before first what we're going to do is we're going to place our scaffolding right here on the edge of our killing floor and we're going to go up 20 blocks so that was already one two three there we go we are 20 blocks way up into the air we are going to climb our scaffolding tower here and at the top i'm going to put down four blocks in that direction and over here i'm going to make one then i'm going to go out one on either side and then we're going to go another extra one just like that so we'll have our tower woo right there <laughs> yay hooray and i'm going to go ahead and build some scaffolding in here which we can destroy later uh so well uh, this is basically what this looks like i don't want to say what it looks like it looks like a spaceship woohoo a rocket now in that Opening of that Y, we're going to go ahead and place one of our uh, our solid blocks. Then we're going to grab our beds and we're gonna place down a bed on the sort of starter positions of these Ys, just like that. Next, we are going to grab our workstations and just one extra bit of uh, solid block. We're gonna place our workstations on top of the two beds on either side. We're gonna put down a solid block right here, a workstation down right there, and then one of our jack-o'-lanterns right there. That'll just keep this place nice and lit. Next, we are going to grab one of our trap doors and our carpet. We'll need to place down a temporary block. I'm gonna put this temporary block right there, and then a trap door on the top of that temporary block with carpet on top of that, so we'll have to jump. Oops, I placed the carpet incorrectly. Come to me, carpet, and get out of here, temporary block. And place the carpet, there we go. Also, I like uh, placing the trap door in such a way that if you accidentally open it, the villagers can't get out. Also, that carpet will keep the villagers in there. And that is basically the villager chamber. So now, we are going to build up a few more, just one more uh, uh, block up here. So you can see that we have the two blocks for the villager and then one basically block of air, or you could think of it this way, is just place a block directly onto that uh, piece of carpet. So once that block is on that carpet, 
and we've jumped off of our scaffolding tower, we are just going to build a three by three platform for us to stand on. Then we're gonna take our jack-o'-lanterns and this will make sure that all of these lights are lit up as we're doing stuff up here. So we have that three by three with the two jack-o'-lanterns on the front and the back. Then we're going to come out three more blocks then on the front, right where that jack lantern is, there's going to be a open space. Whoops. And then another block. Destroy that block because that was a mistake. And that's going to go all the way out. And then two more blocks just like this. And this will create a nice large area for our iron golems to spawn. Once again, we are coming out three blocks. Leave an empty space next to that jack o lantern. And then come out those extra five blocks. Then on the back where there you have that extra two sort of jutting out, we're also gonna put an extra two on the back over here. And this is basically our spawning platform. Now it is time to add a way for the iron golems to fall off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the top of this jack-o'-lantern and place down a trapdoor. Then we're gonna put a temporary block on the edge of that trapdoor and then put a trapdoor on top of that temporary block. So that trapdoor will open away from us. This trapdoor will open to the edge of that jack-o'-lantern and then we can destroy that temporary block. And that will mean that they will walk this way and their AI will have them fall down. I know that there is still four pieces of glass and a water bucket that we have to deal with. Four pieces of glass that's gonna come in just a little while. The water bucket goes in that area next to that workstation. So that is where the villagers are gonna bob up and down and be able to see that zombie uh, eventually once we get it there. So now we're just going to leave this area, get out of here, and you can break all of the scaffolding Boop. and that'll all break up there and it's nice and clean. And now we have to build the second pod. So we have to do all of that one more time. We're gonna get to this glass in just a moment. I forgot to mention that uh, originally we had made this four sort of jut out here before we added the extra scaffolding to our Y spaceship looking thing here. And that is because this area, this fifth block right here, this is eventually where our, uh, uh, zombie is going to go. So on your second pod, you can kind of leave this scaffolding up until you uh, finish. There's a few more steps. So leave the scaffolding up on the second pod. Now that my second pod has been made, it is time to put our attention towards the roof. So go ahead and grab all of those blocks and it is fairly simple. You are just going to make a roof. I, fe I fell in. Anybody catch that? I fell in. I mean, let's not talk about it. You're gonna make a roof that is three taller than our area right here. So we can kind of start our stone slab right there. And then also three off to the side in every direction. So boop. Boop and boop. So that is on this side and then we'll do the same thing over on the other side. I'm just gonna make a little bridge over there. Woo jump off. And whoops, one, two, three, up. That three that three tallness need, definitely needs to be there. Otherwise your zombies are not, or your iron golems are not going to have enough space to roam. So we need to build from there all the way over to that side. This three by three overhang is to make sure that your lightning or any lightning really will not hit our villagers. If lightning hits this platform, where it is now, everything will be fine. But if we didn't have the platform, then it could turn our villagers into witches, which doesn't help anybody. Also, make sure that you build this on the half slab. So make sure that these half slabs are actually half slabs and not the upper half of full slabs. That way, no mobs will spawn on top of them. It will stop mob spawning. Here you go, I have connected all of the corners and now it is time just to fill in the center. I counted correctly, hooray. So, cause I only have one half slab left. There we go, perfect. So now all of the half slabs are down and we can destroy all of our scaffolding over on the top here and it looks gorgeous. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what is this glass used for, Chad? Well, the reason that we have this glass is we are going to place it right 
here. Uh, and that will make sure that our iron golems don't accidentally move off of the edge. They're going to constantly try to get to that area. So we're going to look at this open area. It's not the one directly next to the pumpkin there, just the one right off to the side. And we're going to place down our glass. So you should have three pieces of uh, space in air. Oh my gosh. And I'm, oh, hooray, hooray, feather falling. Yay. So I guess this is a good time to mention that uh, it does get dark down here, so make sure that you have some some lighting blocks somewhere in order to make sure that <laughs> you don't get a lot of mobs uh, spawning uh, underneath. Remember how we used uh, some lighting blocks in our in our stuff up there? Yeah, that was why is because there is that once we add that roof, it does get dark. I destroyed my scaffolding too early. We need to go make a bridge across here. Oh, whoops, I missed it. But anyway, now we're gonna add the last of our glass, look directly up and place it right there and look directly up. Oops, and I placed it a little bit too far, but whatever. There we go. So now we have our glass. We're basically done with uh, the this spawning area. Now it is time to get our villagers and to get our zombies. In order to move the villagers and zombies, I suggest mine carts because you do have to go up into the air quite a lot. You could use boats, but boats don't really go up very easily. So we are going to basically be building a stair step situation from this one specific spot over here on either of the sides of these villager areas so first is right there so right there is where we're going to eventually want our villagers to hop off on and we want to pull this off at night time specifically night time the reason is because they will immediately go to sleep and then as it's still nighttime, we can destroy all the blocks, and when they wake up, they'll only have one block to wake up to, which is that block right there. So we are going to build out and down so that we can uh, get this all done, and I'm gonna use this to fall. And I just sort of judge that is, this is the block path that we're gonna want to stay on. So I'm just gonna estimate it here and make a stair step up. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not very glamorous i know but uh, this is what you got to do oh perfect oh my gosh this is perfect wow i estimated very well now we're going to grab our powered rail and we're going to set this down as we go up just like so and right here at the top we're going to put down our activator rail as well right there and then grab a lever and Power it. Whoops, I was holding down shift. Power it! And then also power your powered rail until it doesn't power anymore and then power it again. There you go. This rail, all you really need to do is just get your villager to get into a minecart and then push the minecart onto that uh, area. And we have some villagers in here and it's going to be a pain. <sighs> it's going to be a pain. Get in to the minecart. There's mine carts everywhere. Just get in one. Just get in it. Okay, mine cart. You see? You see the mine cart? Get. Oh my, I'm going to punch you into this mine cart. Oh, oh, I have strength. I forgot. <laughs> Oops, there goes one villager. Okay, I took my strength away. <laughs> Can't, I shouldn't do that again. And punch. Get in. No. Once this villager goes in. Okay, you're trapped. Ha ha ha. Now the only escape is by the mine cart. No, you can't go there. Just stop it. I took your, I took your, I took your cactus. That's right. I'll put, put it back. I'm sorry. Now the only way to escape is through the mine cart. You want to leave? You got to go through a mine cart. Also make that open for you so that you can do that. Oh my gosh, this villager is literally pushing this mine cart around. How are you not getting in? Get in the freaking mine cart. Okay, I think I have figured out a solution and it is stupid so rail will turn and i think that i read basically you have to have you have to have it go through a corner there he goes there he goes okay f okay well if you have the same issue that i have there you go i now have the solution for you you have to have a corner so you have to corner your your guy and then you can 
pick him up in your mine cart. Now, he is sitting right here. He is ready to head up there. I don't want to do that quite yet. I want to wait until I have all three of them ready to go. Okay, okay, so I have managed to get uh, this guy in here, and then there are actually two villagers inside of there. You can't tell, but there are. And what we would do if we were in normal survival is we would wait for it to become night, but uh, because... We are not in survival. I'm going to go ahead and just set it tonight, and you're going to see how this is pulled off. So first, we are going to power our rail, and that will send our villager up to the top where he will pop off and run away. What the heck? No, he needs to go to his bed. There we go. And uh, because it's night, he's going to aim for the nearest bed and sleep. So we have basically the entire night in order to pull this off. We're going to grab that cart and run back down here to start again. We're going to unpower our rail. We're going to break that block. We're going to put this connector and do the whole thing again. They take a bit of damage as they go through both of those blocks. We're going to push him. Eh, eh. There we go. And break that. Then put that. And then... Power him and there he goes. Now remember that activator rail is the thing that is up at the top and that is what is removing him from the cart. Hopefully he will turn around here. If he doesn't turn around, I'm going to be really mad and I'm going to make sure he... No. Dang it. No. Turn back around. You, Your bed is over there. Okay. This time I'm also going to set a block right here, which I think will stop them from running back down is what I believe the case to be. So we're gonna put down that block. We are going to grab our cart, push him through, he's gonna take some damage. Oh, oh, and he's off. Oh, 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 good. Oh, wonderful. Okay, there you go, now he's out. Now he's in his bed, wonderful. Did he just die, did he just fall? Oh no, that was a mine cart, the mine cart fell. Okay, cool, we got the mine cart back. We also have this villager that doesn't even realize that it is about to get captured because we are going Get out of here, Sea Pickles. I didn't even know you were there, Sea Pickles. We are going to capture this guy. Uh, like this. Can we do it? Yes! He is captured. Give me your bed. That's right. You don't get a bed. This may or may not be the most complicated way to get this uh, villager to where he needs to go. But we're going to do it. Um, and by complicated, I mean, look at look at my rail situation. It goes over there. So, we're still going to make it happen. It, this is, this is going to be magical. Okay, we put down our cart. It goes by him. And it didn't catch him. Gosh darn it. You know what? This is why I do this uh, for you guys, so that you know the pain, the pain of actually working. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Is he, is he fine? Okay, yes. Okay, good. He's off. He's up there. He's only a little bit hurt. You better not. You better not. You stay up there. There you go. Okay. We may need some potions of healing uh, here. And... In bed, awesome, we did it. So, now you can actually see what it is like to do this if you're actually in survival. This is basically the whole reason I made this uh, video. Don't you dare. Uh, and now we break all of these blocks and that way when it becomes day, and I'm in, you know, I'm. this is like survival light. Um, so, uh, it, once I set it today, then those villagers are trapped up there. We will want to make sure we get rid of some of that scaffolding to make sure that it does not cause any issues. But before we do, we are going to set up the same, we're going to do the same thing over on the other side. And also, we're going to worry about our zombie. And our zombie is going to work a little bit differently. Remember how I said we're going to keep our scaffolding up so that we have a place to put down the stuff for the zombie. Well, that is because we are going to do this a little differently where we have... Ooh, ah! Okay, let's see if we can do this. Uh, uh, ooh, this is so difficult. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so now we have our slab down. And on the other side of the slab, 
Oh man, this is gonna be difficult as well. We are gonna put a block. There we go, there we go. One block, just like so, and another block. So we are gonna do sort of the same situation, but this time, instead of a crazy spot for our villagers not to leave, uh, we are going to have just this powered rail that ends with a slab. And keep in mind how this is positioned. So we have the bed here, one, two, three, four. Uh oh, this is incorrect. Correct. That's not the correct spacing. Our slab needs to be at the end of four of uh, these blocks. So we have right here, one, two, three, four. Our slab needs to be at the end of this. Eh, there we go, on the half block. I must have put, put down a few extra uh, scaffolding while I was working on other things. And so that is where its location needs to be. That'll also be one, whoops, I did not mean to sleep. Uh, now I'm trapped. Now I am a trapped villager. Wow. It really feels bad to be trapped in your own villager. Oh, did my pumpkin just fall? Where'd my pumpkin go? Here it is, in your own villager trap chamber. I can't even, oh my gosh. What I was trying to say before is from the bottom, one, two, three, four, that's also four blocks away. So you got four blocks on either side and I need to go over there and put that that jack-o'-lantern back. Ugh. And eh, there we go. Okay, jack-o'-lantern's been placed back. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Ah, okay, and this is a little bit different than the other side because we do want to make sure this is a little bit lit. But all we're doing, instead of having that activator rail, we're just taking our powered rail and having the minecart fall directly right here. That way, the zombie will just be sitting there. We also have that roof above us, so that should stop the zombie from catching on fire. We need to go back down and do the same sort of stair step up. This should be the last time that we need our scaffolding up here, especially now that the uh, villagers are in position. So we could break this and everything will break. Oh, I love scaffolding. Same sort of stair step situ- Oh my God, did I do this again? I did it amazingly perfect again. Same sort of stair step situation as before. We're just having a ton of powered rail to get up to the top and there's a, uh, oh, get, hey. Hey, buddy, could you, would you mind? Okay, I'll, I'll deal with him. Why is he moving so fast? Thank you. Oh, hey, we actually needed him. No, no, stop. We need, oh my gosh, my iron golem is, is an overachiever here. Uh, so we are going to need to put down some rail and a mine cart. And we may have to kill this iron golem so he doesn't keep killing the zombies that we need. We need them. Ow. No, don't attack me, please. Ouch! Oh, I'm almost dead. Get out creeper! Sir, can you not? Thank you. Okay. <sighs> Do we have any zombies left? Oh, there's one. Okay, great. Hey, zombie man, come over here. I gotta eat some food while we're while, while I'm getting you this direction. Uh, and hopefully he's, he's a lot easier to get in this minecart than the other guy. But zombie, 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 zombie. Look, look, focus, focus, focus. What's, what's wrong? You don't have a way to get up? Okay, come on, let's go. He's coming, he's coming. How hard is he going to be harder to get in the minecart than the other guy, than the, the villager? At least, at least he comes to me. At least I'm my own bait. Come on, get in the minecart. Get, get in the minecart. I have a feeling he's not gonna, he's not gonna get in the minecart like I want him to. No. Nope. Come on. I'm just right here on the other side of this minecart that you know you want to walk into. Oh my gosh, he was literally standing in it. Why do you have to push them into the minecarts all the time? Okie dokie, so new plan. We are going to block this guy off in a blocking block situation. Spider, you're not part of this party. There's a really cheeky creeper. Oh my gosh, I needed him, you jerk creeper. Okay, this is the current plan, is to walk in like so and then go, uh-uh. There you go, yeah, that's right, no! Get, what, get back in there. Hey, hey fella, get into my little trap. That did not work. There we go, now he's trapped. Holy moly, this is difficult. A lot more difficult than I expected. So, we are going to put down a block here and a block here, that way he cannot escape. We're gonna put some blocks above him like so. Then we can destroy that and that and I still want him to be cornered. Okay, perfect, awesome. Now, we can take our rail and do the same thing we did 
with the villagers. He's probably going to take a little bit of damage, but that is totally fine. Okay, now before we grab him, I'm going to make sure that my powered rail is powered all the way. He should take this all the way over to the top and just shoot off the edge here whoa, into that area that doesn't have any rail for him. So let's grab our minecart, put it down, see if it catches him. It did, wonderful, off he goes. And sure enough, there he is inside of the area. He's sitting on top of that uh, slab right there that is a half slab. So he will not, uh, that no, nothing else will spawn right there. And we can break the two blocks on either side of him. There we go. And now we can destroy our tower that we used to get him up here in the first place. I'm not going to lie. I feel like you guys got the point uh, about the villagers. So we are just going to come on in here and we're just going to spawn some in because um, I can't be bothered. So there we go. We got three villagers. Uh, we do want to make sure that each of them sleep. So once again, do that at night so each of them can get a proper sleep and then make sure that the time will advance to at least 2000. That way they can work. And so you'll hear the workspace that writing is what the cartography table sounds like. So everything now is in place for our iron golems to spawn. And so now we just cross our fingers that they actually spawn. There we go. Our first iron golem has spawned. Oh, amazing. And it worked just perfectly. Oh, we can get rid of our scaffolding that is in here. That is something that we wouldn't want. LOL. Hilarious. Oh, and then we also need to put down our uh, lava. Now, all this stuff in the chest, that was just from, you know, me earlier. But you can go ahead and put down your lava onto the edge of this sign right here. Oh, I'm so sorry, guy. Or I'm going to also delete... Just all my inventory because I just have so much stuff in here. And I'm going to pull all that out of there. Delete that. That is our first Iron Golem dying. He died. Let's see. What was his drops? Yay, we got five iron from that uh, Iron Golem. There's another one already. Everything is working. Once again, everything built in 1.15. So you know that this is a working 1.15 farm. Just out of those two guys, we already have eight pieces of iron. Ah, so good. I hope that you found this video useful to you guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a big old thumbs up. Also, make sure you check out the link in the description to see some of the guys who also uh, helped make this video video. Uh, all their stuff is there. Specifically, Techman88 goes into a little bit of detail on how you may want to stack this farm with extra farms to get even bigger results, even better results with your iron farm. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe for future videos, tips, tricks, tutorials, and spotlights here on OMG Craft, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!